So this is the network diagram. On the left-hand side, we have a remote PC with an IP of 14.140.40.12. And the WAN interface on PFSense firewall is having an IP of 14.140.40.109. And the LAN interface is configured with an IP of 192.168.0.109, which connects the server behind the PFSense firewall with an IP of 192.168.0.190. And the intention here is to achieve bi-directional NAT or one-to-one -one NAT. For example, when the traffic is uh, hitting the server from outside, the IP address 14140.40.192 in our case is going to be used as the destination IP and then the translation will happen on the PFSense firewall to the actual IP 192.168.0.190. And when the server is initiating the traffic, the PFSEN sense is supposed to do the uh, source NATing with the same IP address, 14140.40.192. So the source from the server will be 192.168.0.190. When it reaches the PFSense firewall, PFSense firewall is going to use the same IP address that was used for the incoming traffic. So we are going to achieve bidirectional NAT on the PFSense firewall. And below you can see the uh, packet flow from the PC to the server and the subsequent flow from the server to PC. And you can see what will be the source and destination after NAT. For example, when PC is initiating the traffic 14140.40.12, towards the destination 14140.40.192, which is our virtual IP or the bi-directional NAT IP that we are going to configure, the PFSense firewall will translate those address 192.168.0.109 and then the destination will be translated to 192.168.0.190. So here, if you see, while configuring one-to-one -one NAT on PFSense firewall, the source as well as the destination is getting natted on the PFSense firewall. So that is something that we have to consider while configuring the firewall rule. And I'll share the link for this particular diagram so that you can refer and replicate this in your lab. Now let's move on to the firewall configuration. So this is the firewall PFSense running 272, which is the latest release. And the interfaces are WAN LAN, as stated. WAN will have 14140.40.109. LAN will have 192.168.0.109. So now to configure one to one NAT, Click on Firewall, click on NAT, select 1 is to 1, click on Add, and we will configure the 1 to 1 NAT here. So interface is going to be WAN because the WAN interface is going to receive the traffic from outside. Address family is going to be IPv4 in our case. External IP, subnet IP is going to be fourteen one forty forty one ninety two, and the internal IP is going to be. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot one ninety. So this is the external IP. This is the internal actual server IP, which is a Linux machine in our case. And the source, which is the remote PC, is a window machine. In the destination section. You can keep the type as any and you can put the description
nat reflection is not uh, i mean nat reflection you can set it to system default click on save apply the changes so now we have 14 140 40 192 and the translation is going to be 192 1680 190 so next is the firewall rule click on rule click on van and then here you will have to add the firewall rule I'm going to create a rule with protocol any, source as any, and here you will have to be very careful. Since you're using one to one NAT, um, the firewall will do the translation first, and then the uh, firewall will do the policy lookup or the firewall rule lookup. So in the destination, you're supposed to put the actual IP. which is the server IP, 192.168.0.190. Click on log. Click on save. So now you have the inbound rule to allow the traffic from outside to inside. Now let's try to ping. And the ping will fail. Let me quickly this is the uh, window machine. With an IP of 14140.40.12. And I'm running the Wireshark capture as well. So let me try to ping. So I'm going to use 192 since that is the external IP for the actual server. And source is going to be 12. Okay, seems like there is some. Okay, seems like the cache is available. So if you see in the destination Mac, you will see 3609E740AF-F8, which is the MAC address of. WAN interface. So, The firewall is proxying for this particular IP, which is the external IP, one, one to one NAT IP that we have configured. And it is because of the cache, this particular system is having the info. But if you're configuring it for the first time, you will not have cache and you might end up in no communication. So to make sure the firewall is responding to an IP, the external IP, whenever there is a ARP request, then you will have to click on firewall, click on virtual IP, and then here you will have to create the proxy ARP entry here because we are using an external IP and we want PFSense firewall to proxy for that particular ARP request, whenever there is an ARP request for 14140 40 192, which is an external IP that we will be configuring for one to one NAT. So, this is the external IP, and we want the PFSense firewall to proxy for any ARP request for this particular IP. So once you have this configuration in place, your system should receive the ARP 
reply with the MAC address for 14140-4192. Make sure you add this particular entry. If you're using a IP, if you're using an IP which is not configured on the interfaces. So next is the firewall rule. We already have the firewall rule here. Like I mentioned, you will have to make sure you enter the translated address instead of uh, the outside external IP. So once that is done, you should be able to ping. You can see here, I'm able to ping. And I can confirm that. by running TCP dump on PFSense firewall. So you can see the request 192 going towards dot two ICMP reply So XN1 is the WAN interface. So this is the reply packet that is getting captured because of the filter. So you can see now request and reply from 12 going towards 192 and the reply coming from dot 192 towards 12 and you can check the status in the state table as well. So you can see here, 14140.40.12, which is ICMP1 towards 192.168.0.190. And you can see here the, that there is, an, there is a translation going on. 14140.40.192 is getting translated to 192.168.0.190, which proves that the Inbound traffic is working fine. Now let's try to create the rule for the outbound traffic. So click on LAN, click on add, select the interface as LAN, address family IPv4, protocol any, let the source be any, and destination, let us try to let us try to put destination as fourteen one forty forty twelve, which is the remote PC address. Let's try to initiate some traffic from the remote server and the translation should, ha should happen as per the diagram.
So we have the capture running on pfSense firewall. Let's try to initiate some traffic towards the remote PC. And you can see that the server is able to reach out to the remote PC. And this is the capture on the LAN interface. And you can see that the source, which is 192.168.0.190, reaching out to 14.140.40.12. And the subsequent reply, 14.12 towards 192.168.0.190. And if you come to the firewall states, you can see the session information. This is the original source and original destination. You can confirm this from the van interface capture as well. So you can see here, this is the capture taken on van interface and the exiting packet is having source as 14140.40.192 and destination as 14140.40.12. So this proves that our bi-directional one-to-one NAT is working fine. And the key uh, configuration is to have the virtual IP proxy ARP configured. If you are using an IP, which is not configured on any of the interfaces. If you're if you are using the external interface IP, then you do not need to configure the proxy ARP. So make sure you uh, do this configuration. And that's all in this particular video. Please uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. See you in the next video.